Monohull, Catamaran, Trimaran, so many choices. Which hull form to pick? When starting a new ship design, hull form selection is a big question. Can we draw on any science to guide our choices, or shall we just beg Lady Luck to guide us? Although hull form selection does involve some experience and artistic preference, naval architects definitely use a scientific framework when selecting hull forms. This works to achieve the best hull form for each mission and gives us a rationale to justify the final decision. So today we expose the basic science of hull form selection. Time to meet the contenders. Each hull form has its place and applications, and the crux of it is that several overlap in their capabilities. First up, we have the monohull. This is one of the most versatile hull forms available. You see it almost everywhere, and it's especially useful when you have a high weight capacity. You need to carry lots of weight. I'm not talking about carrying televisions or electronics when you need to carry several thousand tons of steel or concrete. Monohulls are great for that. Moving on from the monohull, we have the trimaran. I like to classify this as a great hybrid between the catamaran and the monohull. It has excellent stability and it has moderate weight capacity and moderate deck size. So it's a great balance between monohulls and catamarans. The best of both worlds. Then we have the catamaran. Still lots of stability, but better tuned for low weight cargoes, something where you need large amounts of deck space, but not necessarily a large amount of weight. Cargoes might include things like, well, packing peanuts, people, uh, some electronics, vehicles in some cases. The, depending on your packing, these can all be low density cargoes. Last up on the list, we have the planing hull. This delivers high speed capabilities in a very small package, which is its main advantage. Time for a little math. So what separates the different applications for these hull forms? Mainly speed and cargo capacity. Speed matters because different physical forces become dominant as we go faster and faster. Then deadweight enters the picture. That's your cargo capacity. Deadweight dictates how much of the total displacement we devote to cargo versus propulsion and accommodations. The trick is in identifying which hull forms work best at different ranges and different combinations of these two requirements. So how fast is fast? Of course, everything depends on speed, but fast has a different meaning depending on the size of the vessel. Fast on a small speedboat may invoke entirely different physics than traveling the exact same speed on a giant oil tanker. So let's talk about the Frood number. The Frood number is a way of non-dimensionalizing speed and factoring out the size of the ship so that everybody gets compared on the same scale. You can see the formula down below. So you take the ship's speed and divide it by the root of gravity times the ship's length. The other piece of math that we need is the deadweight coefficient. The deadweight coefficient compares the deadweight of the ship, its cargo weight capacity, to the total ship displacement. For this equation though, the dead weight actually includes cargo weights, fuel weights, provisions for the crew, basically anything that isn't bolted down as a permanent part of the ship. And you have to consider that in your calculations because you could have a ship that has very high dead weight coefficient, but it's all devoted to fuel. So how do we calculate the dead weight coefficient? Well, you first start with the total ship weight, that's its displacement, WS, you subtract off the light ship weight, that is the weight of everything that's bolted down that you can't take off the ship, and divide by the total ship weight again. So what it is, is it's really a fraction of how much weight is devoted to just dead weight, and it can vary from zero to one. Combining all the lessons learned thus far, we begin to see a map for hull form selection, which is shown on your screen. We have the fruit number plotted along the bottom, the x-axis, and then we have the dead weight coefficient plotted above along the vertical, our y-axis. And if you plot your two combinations in there, you can see the different regions where you might want to consider catamaran, trimaran, monohull, or planing hull. Side note for all the boat geeks out there, 
Uh, this is a linear food number along the x-axis, not the volumetric food number. Uh, I have heard people use either volumetric food number or linear food number for general conditions like this one. Uh, I actually checked my math against SNAMI PNA and got similar results compared to the chart that I'm showing you now. So I'm going with linear food number. As you look at this chart, I also want you to notice the overlap between all the different types of hull forms. That's intentional. Sometimes either solution will fit a mission profile fairly well. Or we might even combine technologies. For example, a planing boat can be either a monohull or a catamaran, plus planing. So this map is refusing to dictate a specific hull form. Instead, it guides our hull form selection and encourages out-of-the-box thinking. Don't worry, I didn't forget the SWATH hull form. SWATH stands for Small Water Plane Area Twin Hull. Now these hulls are really a specialized form of catamaran. And that's the important part here, is within each hull form category, you will start to see specialty hulls, which serve a single and specific mission profile. These, all, these hulls all have their place as well. Their designs excel at achieving singular goals and specific mission profiles. So don't forget to consider them because they might serve your purpose far better than anything else can. So what's the lesson here? Well, selecting the best hull form does not yield to simple algorithms and pure rational science. Neither do we stumble blindly through trial and error. We utilize past experiences, non-dimensional coefficients, and simplified physics to discriminate between the utility of various hull forms. No option works for every single case. The talented naval architect considers the entire field of options. We begin with a rational basis, and then we adjust for mission requirements, owner's preferences, and a little artistic preference as well. This results in a hull form that's best suited to the task and well justified through careful consideration. Thanks very much. I'm Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.